Bug Bounty Leavening Part 1, Grabbing Domains. What's up everyone, welcome to this new exciting series we're doing and this is going to be all about live recon on an actual bug bounty target. And luckily we can have a look at Vismas program. Vismas delivers software that simplifies and digitizes core business processes in the private and public sector. And they allowed us to have a look at their assets for this video and to do some live recon. The program itself is hosted on Integrity. And if we look at the in scope section, it says that vulnerabilities in any Vismas service product or web property can be reported to the responsible disclosure program. They might not qualify for the bug bunny program, but we're still allowed to have a look at them. And this is exactly why we're picking this program. And another quick disclaimer, this session is entirely built on the Bug Hunters methodology V4, the Recon Edition. So all credits go out to Jason Haddix, who has come up with that methodology. And I'm just trying to use that. Let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor of this video, ipinfo.io. So what is ipinfo? It's all in the name. ipinfo provides accurate, up-to-date IP address information, including geolocation data, VPN detection, abuse contacts, and other types in a fast and clean API. And they've been doing this for eight years now, handling over 40 billion API requests every month. They also provide a bunch of free features and tools that can be super handy for getting data quickly. One of the most common use cases for me is to check Another IP address that I'm currently investigating, which is simply running curl ipinfo.io followed by the IP address. If you want to play with the data yourself, I would recommend grabbing the ipinfo goland client from github.com slash ipinfo slash cli. And yeah, just go ahead and run some commands, have some fun. So the first thing you want to do is obviously you go to the bug bunny program description. What we're seeing here is the Visma program on integrity, and you have like all the assets they want to have tested in there. So go start there and grab all those domains. Next up, you want to check mergers and acquisitions. And a really good resource for that is a website called Crunchbase. And Crunchbase shows you the business numbers, how many employees, whatsoever the company has, but also the acquisitions. And acquisitions mean which companies were bought by the company you're targeting. And with that, you can see which domains those companies had that were bought by your actual current target. And what you want to do is you just go over all the acquisitions or maybe just the ones out of the last one, two, three years, and you copy the domains that those bought companies had. And what you're doing next is you add them to your list of domains in which you're collecting all the domains that you have already found. All right, what are we doing next? Hurricane Electric Internet Services. We are searching for ASNs or autonomous system numbers. And if we do that, we can just fire in Visma. And with that, we do see a couple of results. And if we click on the ASN, we do get additional info. We do see, for example, that the company's website is visma.com. So we can quickly verify if those ASNs that we were getting shown actually belong to the target or not. So once we have done that, we go ahead and we store those ASNs. Remember autonomous system numbers, which are like a big overview of IP ranges that belong to a company. And what we can do is we will just store them for now in its own file called asn.txt. And once we have done that, we will move one step further. And now that we do have those ASNs, why not just use them, right? Otherwise it wouldn't make sense. And for that, I want to show you a tool called MetaBigger. And what we're doing with that one is we're going to extract the IP ranges. And we do see MetaBigger's GitHub page over here on the left, and we are running cat ASN.txt, so like all the ASNs that we have collected, piped it into MetaBigger and run net minus minus ASN minus O and write all the IP ranges that MetaBigger finds into an output file. And if we do that and have a look, we'll see that there's quite a number of IP ranges coming in. 
So now it's just time to store them for later and yeah, just put them aside and make sure that we have those ready. So now we have ASNs, domains, and IP ranges. Next up, we can have a look at a really great tool called a mass, and this is to extract domains. So we are going ahead and say, we're running a mass, and we're going to say Intel minus ASN. And then once again, we can provide the list of ASNs or individual ASNs that we have collected so far. And if we do that, a mass is going to not extract an IP range, but collects all the domains that it can find within those ASNs. And we're doing that for all the ASNs that we've collected. And after that, we can once again grab all those domain names and add them to the list of domains that we are already collecting. All right, next up, we're having another recon technique. And once again, this credit goes all to Jason Haddix. I'm just reproducing what he's been doing. We're going to extract domains by using Waxy's domain search engine. And in more detail, we're actually going to use the reverse who is information with, for example, acubis.com as our trial domain right now. So we're going ahead and say acubis.com. And what we are seeing over here is that there are similar domains listed to the one that we fired into the search engine. So we go ahead and we do once again, get a number of domains that might be of interest to us. So next up, we have to collect all those domains. Domains, once again, go into our domains.txt file. So this file is getting populated with more and more domains and we're having more and more domains to look at once we go ahead later on searching for subdomains. Next up, I want to show you a tool called DomLink. And DomLink is also about extracting domains. In fact, it's doing the exact same thing what we have been doing with Waxy, but it's doing it in an automated way. So we're going to run DomLink pi minus d at What we are seeing is that we're not having any API queries left. So we need to recharge. This tool actually relies on Waxy's API engine. And if you look at the who is or reverse who is price model, you pay a couple of dollars for a number of IP calls, API calls. So if you want to do that, you got to purchase that module first and then insert the API key into Waxy. Okay. Next up, we are going to have a look at BuiltWith. Once again, we want to extract domains. So BuiltWith is usually a website that allows you to enter any domain and it will tell you a lot about what the website was built with. But here comes the interesting part. Let's look at the domain. We're going to use vismasoftware.no and there is a technology profile, a metadata profile whatsoever, but there's also a relationship profile. And this is a history and which shows us which other IPs use that information that can be found on Visma Software No, for example, uh, tracking link. And we do find further domains that are in relation to the one domain that we already know about. So of course we're going ahead and grab all those domains as well, because if they are related, they kind of have to belong to the same corporation or the same company. All right. Next up, in, we are going to have a look at Shodan. And Shodan is pretty popular. It's a search engine but it allows us to extract domains, which is what we want to do in this first part of this video. So we're going to fire in, for example, the main domain being visma.com. And we do see that there is a list of SSL certificates that shows us additional domains once again. And we'll just grab them and add them to our domains list. And it's not just that. If you go to the show then, you also find interesting locations that you could eventually use to search for vulnerability, to search for interesting information, or just to have a look and get an idea how the whole company is structured. All right, so we are going to add all of those to our list of domains. And 
with that, this actually concludes our first part of this live Rackon video. In the next one, part two, which is coming out soon, we're going to have a look at how we can enumerate subdomains. Now that we're having domains, IP ranges, and ASNs, how do we get to all those juicy subdomains? But this is up next in part two. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section if you have any questions. Once again, big, big, big shout out to Jason Haddix. I couldn't have done this video if it wasn't for you. And yeah, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you folks pretty soon again.